Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I'm going to do a quick test and that is a replication of one that was done by Dave who works on the Vega experiments. And what he did was something I guess that was inspired by the de Vau work where de Vau at the Fondation de Roli, they were replicating the work of Rutskev, Leonid de Rutskev on exploding foils. And they found that when they put a strong magnet into some of the detritus that had been produced by these exploding foils, they had found that uh, some of them responded very strongly to magnets. Well, Dave said that he did something similar, and I am going to try and replicate what Dave said he observed. So I am going to take these two ND52 neodymium magnets, and I'm going to wrap them such that I can place them in, in the water and try and retrieve anything that might be captured by their fields. So here is my little paddle. I have wrapped the magnets onto the little plastic stand there with some painter's masking tape and then I've put some black electrical tape around it. So that is the completed assembly and I'm going to wave that in the tank and see if it's uh, going to cause any of those pieces of so-called aluminium to be attracted to it. Okay, so here's the probe, and in the background I have the tank, and I've got a bright LED in it that's up here. I'll put my finger in front, and that uh, it's causing that reflection over there. But let's see if we get any joy from the particles that are in this tank. Let's see. I see a whole lot of movement. Let's stir it up. See if anything gets. Oh, I don't see a whole lot there. I don't see a whole lot. Well, there does appear to be a couple of particles on there. I'm going to see if I can wash them off. No, they do seem to be stuck there. I don't know if you can make that out. Yeah, particularly this couple there and there. So, I'll try and wash those off. So whilst I wasn't too amazed by the amount of material that I could acquire onto the tape covered magnet, I do need to bear in mind that I was looking at the stuff in my ultrasonic device about three, two and a half days after I ran the experiment. So I don't know whether that has anything to do with it, but it may do. And this is obviously something that people can try very, very easily. But if you see what I'm showing you now, uh, this is with the Nerugo microscope on the Samsung S7 on the right and the Dino light with specular on on the left. And this was one of the three features that uh, I immediately identified um, had been 
captured, the three, three pieces of aluminium that had been captured by the magnet. And I thought this was a, a good one to have a quick look at. And it looks very much like it is the uh, product of an intense vortex. Now, why do I say that? It may not be clear to you, but this central section here uh, is a hexagon and it has some central features here as well. I'm, I'm just going to um, highlight that. I have a overlay here. So this is this is a kind of an angle to the camera. This is more slightly more face on. The Dynalite isn't so good at picking out the geometry, but it's definitely better at picking out the detail than the Narugo in this, this particular case because I don't have control over the um, polarization on the Narugo. So th there we go. That is two views of that. And I've actually taken quite a few views of it so you can get a better idea of what is going on. So I'm going to look at them now. Now in this image the hexagon looks a little bit uh, here and, and but it's slightly over towards um, the top left hand side of the frame and what you will see as I go through this that sometimes it's shifted down here and obviously it's not a um, clean cut in it has a, some relief and some angle I think in there and uh, different lighting conditions from different angles reveal this in a slightly different way but th this looks like the center point here but actually the, you'll see in other shots it looks like it's here and, and in fact the center point is a a kind of area in this um, area that I'm waving my mouse pointer here now in some of the shots depending on the polarization you can actually see that there's a a kind of black area and then you have this uh, more silvery area in this area you kind of it almost looks like there's a some sort of sphere in the middle I mean is that iron if that is iron that might uh, explain why or even something even more magnetic um, why it was picked up by the magnet in theory and um, it almost looks like you've got this eye in the center here with a, a thing that goes around like that, around there, and then a thing that goes around like that with the, the black mark here. So it kind of goes around here. One thing is for sure, there does seem to be, it would appear, kind of three tails. And it's almost like the, the, the point of the hexagon here, this is defining one tail off this side, then there's a gap, then there's one tail off this side, and then there's a gap, and then there's one tail off that side. And we've seen these kind of structures in the lion reactor as well where we had a, a three-tailed item and one can imagine that this vortex ripped this section out of the aluminium as it did its work so this is a, a blowed up section and uh, is that a sphere is that a hole maybe it's a hole slightly different illumination there and this is very different illumination so you can see the lights coming from a different side so I guess the lights coming from over this side so this is illuminated and this is dark and when I turn that off you can see that this edge is illuminated uh, so the light is probably coming from this angle and it means you can see the the other side of the hexagonal section here and a bit of shadow going on there this is some dimensioning and like I say I took the center point here but you will see that there's almost like looks like a center point there in fact if we go back to here the center point there and there's a it looks like there's two um, kinds of spherical or circular sections or at least a, a slot in the center of this overall hexagon so if I take that back you'll see that if I switch between those two um, you see what I mean so I actually, when I measured this, I, I measured from the center of the second kind of what looks like a center in this particular shot. And it gives me a 46 uh, micrometer radius. I imagine that it might even be around about um, 50 micrometer radius, this particular structure core. So there we go. It, it, I mean, it very looks very clear, the, the hexagon here. 
is it moves quite a bit. Um, so the light's coming from a different angle on that one. Uh, this is more top down. Now on this this shot um, with the change in the specularity, you can see this bit and this bit. Um, but you can see that this it really it was spinning around and. You've got the, the point here and the point here and the point here. So this is one, two sides. And if you draw a line across those two sides from there to there, that's almost like this wing. And then if you call it, you've got this side and this side and draw a line there um, to here maybe, this is this wing. And then this one, this one, and then this is this wing. And it's very interesting because that divides it into... 320 degree segments and that is exactly what we saw on the back face of the magneto hydrodynamic structure that ate through the quartz in the lion reactor obviously this is a very very different situation that's a slightly different illumination on the same shot again this is much much clearer on that second spot area or hole and in fact it does look like that is even a hexagon in the middle there we can go back to the blown up shot and you can take an opinion on there so you can see the two areas there is one an inia now t is is the whole thing a hole the beauty beauty of this experiment is that i probably produced this structure in including f putting the foil on and everything and running the experiment probably no more than about five to eight minutes and so those people out there that have the facility to replicate this and capture one of these structures and put it under a scanning electron microscope or a confocal laser microscope there is a, a great blue ocean of opportunity to define uh, what's going on in this with relatively little effort and so I have to say that I'm quite satisfied with what was observed here. Uh, again, you can see there's a line here, there's a line here, there's a line here, there's a line there, there's a line there. It's almost like it's, uh, I guess, the, the six points. But they kind of go to, yeah, they do go to the points, I guess. It's not quite so clear on that. But you can take your opinion on that. However, this is a hexagonal structure. It has 320 degree divisions on the uh, wings, as it were. They're not perfect. It's a highly dynamic system. So I wouldn't ever expect it to be a perfect outcome. But I think that if you replicate this experiment, you will observe these kind of structures. And whether they are magnetic and I just ha happen to pick one up, um, that is very very interesting because this is started out as aluminium and I just had tap water in there and the fact that this is centered on a structure that obviously was involved in a intense vortex system have we got transmuted material in here that's the question I think I need to leave you with so uh, totally totally satisfied with that replication and Dave uh, can take credit for doing the test that led to me doing this test. I will try another test immediately after I've done an experiment in another experiment and see if we get more of these kind of structures rather than uh, do it, leaving it a couple of days. And so with that, I say thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.